In a small town in the south of England, a boy named James Wilson was born. Since childhood, James was not like everyone else. Instead of playing football with other children or building construction sets, he spent hours watching the cars parked along the street. His attention was attracted by the shiny bodies, the smooth sound of the running engines and the speed with which the cars accelerated along the roads. James grew up in a family where a car was not just a means of transportation, but also an object of pride. His father, Harry Wilson, worked as a mechanic and often took his son with him to the garage. There, among the tools and spare parts, James learned to understand the workings of cars. He quickly learned how to disassemble and reassemble engines, change oil, and repair brakes. Already in his teens, James began to show extraordinary abilities. He could start any car using just a few tools. At first, it was just a hobby, but over time, it turned into an obsession. James dreamed of the freedom that speed could give him. He dreamed of the adventures that awaited him on the roads. His first hijacking happened when he was just 16. It was an old model Jaguar that belonged to a neighbor. James knew that this machine had not been used for a long time and decided to try his hand at it. One night he sneaked up to the car, opened the hood, and a few minutes later the engine began to roar. James's heart was pounding with excitement as he pulled out onto the deserted street. This moment was the beginning of his long and dangerous journey. James continued his thefts, each time choosing more and more complex and expensive cars. He became known in criminal circles under the nickname Master. His name was on the lips of all policemen and criminals in England. But James had no intention of stopping. His goal was to become a legend, a man who could steal any car anywhere. Over the years, James's skills improved. He studied new technologies, ways to hack security systems, and was always one step ahead of the police. His reputation grew, and not only law enforcement officers began to hunt him, but also competitors from the criminal world who wanted to prove their superiority. One day, when James was 22, he decided to carry out a daring theft, which was to become his most notorious case. The latest Aston Martin was on display at an elite motor show in London. The car was equipped with the most advanced security systems, and penetration seemed impossible even for experienced car thieves. But James saw this as a challenge. He carefully prepared. He studied all the security schemes, found out the schedule of the exhibition, and even acquired fake documents in order to freely enter the territory. On the night the theft was planned, James acted quickly and decisively. Using his skills and modern technology, he bypassed all security systems and was able to start the car. When the guards noticed the loss, it was already too late. James was rushing through the deserted streets of London at great speed. This hijacking made James a legend. Now everyone knew his name, and even the most skeptical critics recognized his skill. But fame brought not only respect, but also many problems. James realized that he had become a target for many. The police redoubled their efforts to catch him, and competitors began making plans to eliminate him. Despite the dangers, James continued to do his job. He found in this not only adrenaline, but also the meaning of life. Each new theft was for him like another stage in an endless race where his freedom was at stake. He is used to living on the edge, constantly on the move and changing locations to remain elusive. One day, James received an offer that was too tempting to refuse. One of the most influential crime bosses in London, known under the pseudonym Black Jack, offered James a job to steal several exclusive cars for sale on the black market. The reward was huge, and James decided to take on the challenge. He assembled a team of the best specialists, hackers, mechanics, and drivers. Each of them was the best in their field, and together they were the ideal team to carry out grandiose plans. Their operations were thought out to the smallest detail, and every step was planned in advance. However, no business is complete without surprises. During one of the operations, 
James and his team encountered unexpected problems. The security turned out to be more professional than they expected, and a shootout began. James managed to avoid arrest, but some of his men were caught. This incident made him think about the future. He understood that each new hijacking brought him closer to the inevitable end. But James couldn't stop. He was driven by a passion for cars, speed, and freedom. New adventures and dangers awaited him ahead, but he was ready for them. James knew one thing. As long as he was driving, he was not afraid of anything. After the failure of the last operation, James decided to temporarily lay low. He knew that the police had intensified their search, and his competitors would not give up trying to get him out of the way. These days he became more careful and carefully planned his every step. His hideout was in a small town on the coast, where he rented an old house and completely modernized it so that it would not be visible to prying eyes. Here James spent time analyzing his past mistakes and developing new hijacking methods. He often looked at the map of England, choosing the next targets that would be worthy of his skill. One day he received a letter from an old friend, a former policeman who once saved James from arrest. The letter contained information about an upcoming auction of rare cars, which was to be held in a private club on the outskirts of London. Among the cars for sale was the unique Bugatti Type 57 SC Atlantic, one of the rarest and most expensive cars in the world. This news shocked James. He understood that stealing such a car would be the greatest feat of his career, but he also realized that the operation would be extremely risky. The club was well guarded, and there could be people inside who would do anything to protect their valuables. James began preparations. He reassembled his team, but this time he chose only the most trusted people. Among them were a hacker named Max, who could hack any security system, and driver Lucas, known for his high-speed maneuvering skills. Auction night came quickly. James and his team arrived at the club early to inspect the grounds and make sure everything was ready. Max hacked the video surveillance system and opened access to internal cameras, which allowed them to monitor the security and movement of guests. When the auction began, James and Lucas sneaked in disguised as attendants. Their task was to pass unnoticed and get to the exhibition hall where the Bugatti was parked. During this time, Max remained in touch, transmitting data about the movements of the guards and helping to avoid traps. James and Lucas acted quickly and accurately. They managed to get to the car without arousing suspicion. But when they were almost ready to leave, the alarm suddenly went off. Panic broke out in the club, and security guards rushed to the exit to block all paths. The situation was becoming critical, but James did not lose his composure. He ordered Max to turn off the alarm, which bought them a few extra minutes. Lucas took the wheel and they took off, fighting their way through the barriers. The pursuit was swift. The police and the club's private security gave chase, but Lucas's skills and James' skill allowed them to evade the pursuit. They were eventually able to hide the car in one of James's safe houses. This hijacking became a sensation. James and his team have once again proven that they are the best in the business. But James understood that with each such case his risks increased. He became more cautious and decided that the next hijacking would be carefully planned and less noticeable so that he could lie low again and continue his legend unnoticed. While James and his team enjoyed their momentary victory, they did not realize that they had attracted the attention of not only the police, but also the most dangerous criminal gangs in England. Their daring thefts, especially the last one, became a source of envy and discontent among competitors. Crime bosses began to look for ways to recruit James to cooperate or eliminate him. One evening, James received an unexpected invitation to a meeting from London's most powerful crime boss, Victor the Shark Brown. It was impossible to refuse such an invitation, so James decided to take a risk and go to the meeting, taking Max and Lucas with him as cover. Victor met them at his luxurious mansion on the outskirts of the city. He offered James a deal that was hard to refuse, 
to steal for him a rare and unique McLaren F 1LM car from the private collection of one of the richest men in the country. Victor promised huge rewards and protection from competitors, but in return demanded absolute loyalty. James knew that this proposal could be both his greatest victory and his greatest failure. He took time to think and began planning the operation with his team. Max began collecting information about the collection and security systems, while Lucas prepared for any possible situation on the road. After a few weeks, they were ready to go. The collection was located in a secure estate, surrounded by high fences and protected by the most modern technology. James knew that this time the stakes were too high and any miscalculation could cost them their freedom or even their lives. The operation began late at night. Max hacked the security systems and opened access to the territory. James and Lucas made their way inside, avoiding cameras and security patrols. They walked to the garage where the McLaren F1LM was parked and began work. Suddenly, Max radioed an alarming message. Unknown armed people had arrived on the territory. The situation became tense. James knew that time was short. He and Lucas got into the car and drove out of the garage, but the path to freedom was blocked. A shootout began. Max, using his skills, disabled several cameras and opened additional gates to give them a chance to escape. Lucas, showing all his driving talent, maneuvered between obstacles, avoiding pursuit. James, sitting nearby, tried to coordinate the team's actions. As a result, they managed to escape from the trap and hide on deserted roads, but they knew that they were now being hunted. The return to Victor passed without incident. He was pleased with the work done and kept his promise, paying James and his team the promised reward. But James understood that they had entered a new, more dangerous game. Victor was a powerful ally, but also a dangerous enemy. Now James and his team had to find a way to maintain their freedom and protect their lives. New challenges, dangers, and adventures lay ahead of them. They knew that in a world where few can be trusted, Survival depends on staying one step ahead of your enemies, and James, as always, was ready to take on this challenge. After a successful operation to steal a McLaren F1LM, James and his team realized that they were embroiled in a more complex and dangerous game than they could have imagined. Despite all the risks, James understood that each new case raised his status and strengthened his reputation in the criminal world. For some time, the team decided to act more cautiously. They temporarily moved to another city to avoid increased attention from the police and competitors. There, James made new connections and began to develop plans for the future. One of these plans was the creation of a network for the theft and sale of rare cars throughout Europe. James knew that to do this, he would need to expand the team and attract the best specialists in various fields. He began to look for people who could become his allies in this matter. Soon, new members joined the team. Emma, an expert in forging documents and changing vehicle identification, and Thomas, an expert in hacking the most complex security systems. With their help, James's team became even more invincible and ready for the most difficult tasks. The first major operation of the new squad was a series of thefts of rare cars from private collections throughout Europe. They worked quickly and smoothly, using their skills and knowledge to overcome any obstacles. James and his team became famous in criminal circles not only in England but also abroad. However, the team's successes did not go unnoticed. Police and private detectives across Europe began to actively hunt for them, James knew that every new theft brought them closer to the point where they could be caught. He began to develop a plan that would allow them to disappear from the radar of law enforcement and continue their activities in the shadows. One of these plans was to create false leads that would distract the police and competitors from their true goals. James and Max developed an entire system of disinformation, spreading false information about their locations and plans. This allowed them to relieve pressure for a while and focus on more important tasks. But even in the shadows, 
James remained vigilant. He knew that among his circle there could be traitors or spies working for his enemies. Therefore, he established strict security rules and carefully vetted everyone who wanted to join his team. Meanwhile, Victor Shark Brown, pleased with the previous results, offered James a new task. This time the goal was even more complex and dangerous. The theft of a luxury limousine belonging to one of the most influential politicians in Europe. James knew that this operation would be extremely risky, but it could also pay huge dividends. The preparation for the operation was long and thorough. James and his team studied every detail of the security, the route of movement and possible methods of breaking into the limousine. Finally, they were ready to complete the task. The night of the operation began with precise and coordinated actions. Max hacked the security systems and gained access to the limo's route. Thomas prepared all the necessary equipment, and Emma provided false documents and escape routes. James and Lucas took on the hardest part, stealing the limo and getting it to safety. When the limousine appeared on the road, James and Lucas quickly neutralized the guards and took possession of the car. But suddenly they were attacked by a group of unknown armed people. The situation got out of control and a fierce firefight began. James realized it was an ambush. Using their skills and composure, James and Lucas managed to fight back and escape in a limousine. But they knew that now they were being hunted not only by the police and their competitors, but also by powerful enemies who would stop at nothing to destroy them. James decided that they urgently needed to change their plan and find a new shelter. They moved to a small village in the north of England, where no one knew them or could find them. Here they began to develop new strategies and prepare for the next stage of their dangerous and exciting life. New challenges, dangers, and adventures awaited James and his team ahead. They knew that every new day brought new challenges, but they were ready to accept them and continue their legendary history. In a quiet village in the north of England, James and his team began a new life, but it was only a temporary refuge. James knew they couldn't stay here long. They used this time to rest, recover, and make new plans. James was determined to continue his activities, but now his strategies became more complex and cautious. One day, James came up with an idea on how to use his skills to achieve even greater benefits. He decided to organize illegal races with stolen cars, where huge sums of money would be at stake. It was not only a risky, but also an extremely profitable venture. James knew that such races would attract many rich and powerful people looking for an adrenaline rush. The first race was organized at an abandoned airfield nearby. James and his team prepared several rare and fast cars that had been stolen in the past and invited participants. The race was a great success, and James saw great potential. But with success came new problems. The police began to receive information about illegal racing, and James knew he needed to be even more careful. He decided to move the races to different locations and change the route each time to make things more difficult for law enforcement. During one of these races, James met Carla, a talented racer who instantly caught his attention. She was brave, knew how to handle cars, and shared his passion for speed. Carla quickly became not only a member of his team, but also his partner in the most risky operations. Meanwhile, Victor Shark Brown, having learned about James's new activity, offered him support and protection in exchange for a share of the profits. James understood that this agreement could be beneficial, but also carried dangers. He decided to accept the offer, but with the condition that they would act only on his terms. While James and Carla enjoyed their racing success, Max and Emma continued to work on new ways to hack and change car identifications. Thomas developed new security systems for their hideouts so they could remain invisible to the police. One night, after another successful race, James received an alarming message from Max. He learned that a major police operation was being prepared against them. James realized that the time they spent in the village had come to an end. It was urgent to change the location and develop new plans. 
they decided to move to the continent, to Europe, where they could continue their activities away from the close attention of the British police. The move was difficult and required careful preparation. James and his team worked day and night to ensure a safe passage. Finally, they reached France and settled in Paris. Here, in the center of European civilization, they began a new chapter in their history. James contacted local crime bosses and quickly gained their respect with his skills and cunning. In Paris, James and Carla organized a new series of illegal races, which became even more popular and profitable. Max continued to develop his skills, hacking the most complex security systems, while Emma provided reliable escape routes and fake documents. At the same time, James did not forget about his past. He knew that his enemies and the police would not leave him alone. He developed new strategies to stay one step ahead. Carla became not only his partner, but also a loyal ally, supporting him in the most difficult moments. And although their life was full of dangers, James and his team were not going to stop. New adventures, challenges, and trials lay ahead of them. James knew one thing. While he was driving, not a single obstacle would stop him on the path to freedom and glory. In Paris, where the city lights at night shone brighter than the stars, James and his team found a new life. But even here, in the heart of Europe, their past continued to haunt them. They knew they couldn't afford to relax. In the evenings, when the streets were quiet, they gathered in their shelter and discussed new plans. One of these plans was to steal the most secure car ever produced, the Bugatti La Voiture Noire. This car was not only expensive, but also had a unique security system designed specifically to prevent it from being stolen. James knew that stealing this car would be his greatest achievement. Preparation for the operation took several months. Max researched all possible ways to break into the security system. Thomas developed a plan for infiltration, and Emma provided fake documents and alibis for the entire team. Carla trained in simulators to be prepared for any eventualities on the road. James, as always, led the process and coordinated the actions of all team members. He understood that this time the stakes were incredibly high and any mistake could cost them their freedom or their lives. Finally, the night of the operation arrived. Bugatti La Voiture Noire was on display in one of the most protected museums in Paris. James and his team were ready for action. They arrived early, hiding in the shadows and watching the guards. Max hacked the security system and turned off the CCTV cameras, opening the way for infiltration. Thomas disarmed several hidden sensors to avoid an alarm. Emma prepared all the necessary documents and created false leads to confuse the police. James and Carla entered the museum and got to the car. As they were about to start the engine, one of the backup safety systems suddenly went off. Security began to move towards them and the situation became critical. James acted quickly and decisively. He ordered Max to turn on the distraction signals to gain a few precious minutes. Carla started the engine and they raced out of the museum at full speed. The guards gave chase, but Carla's skills allowed them to evade pursuit. The streets of Paris flashed past the windows as they raced towards their hiding place. The entire team was on standby to ensure their safe return. They knew every moment could be their last, but they trusted their skills in each other. When they finally reached safety, James and Carla breathed a sigh of relief. They had Bugatti La Voiture Noire, and it became their greatest victory. The whole world knew about the daring theft, and James once again confirmed his status as a legendary car thief. But the joy of victory was overshadowed by new threats. The police intensified their search, and enemies from the criminal world did not give up trying to catch James and his team. They understood that new challenges awaited them, and every new day brought new challenges. James decided that now was the time to go underground and develop even more complex and sophisticated plans. He began to build a network of contacts throughout Europe to ensure his safety and continue his activities.
Each member of the team knew that their lives had become even more dangerous, but they were ready to take on the challenge. New adventures awaited them ahead, and James was confident that together they could overcome any obstacles. After all, for him and his team, the main thing is freedom and speed and no force can stop them. After the daring theft of the Bugatti La Voiture Noire, attention on James and his team reached its peak. They knew they were the number one target for police and criminal gangs across Europe. However, this did not stop them. They understood that they now had to act even smarter and more carefully. For some time, James and his team lay low, hiding in a small town in the south of France. Here they developed a new plan that would allow them not only to avoid persecution, but also to continue their activities. James decided to create a network of underground garages and workshops where they could modify stolen cars, making them almost unrecognizable. One of these workshops was an old farm on the outskirts of the city. The outwardly unremarkable building hid inside high-tech equipment and professional mechanics ready to work on any car. Max set about installing state-of-the-art security systems to protect their shelter from possible intruders. Meanwhile, James began to establish connections with local crime bosses. He understood that to work successfully in a new environment, cooperation and mutual support were necessary. Gradually, he gained trust and respect, becoming part of the criminal network of southern France. One day, James received an offer that he could not ignore. One of the influential businessmen, hiding his real identity, offered a large sum of money for the theft of a unique Ferrari P4-5 Competition, which belonged to his competitor. This car was exhibited at a private exhibition in Monte Carlo, and stealing it was not only difficult but also extremely risky. James realized that this task could bring him not only a lot of money, but also new opportunities. He assembled a team and began preparations. Emma provided all the necessary information and fake documents. Max developed a plan to hack the security system, and Thomas prepared all the necessary equipment. The night of the operation came quickly. James and Carla, masquerading as exhibition guests, got inside. They moved carefully, avoiding cameras and security. Max, as always, was in touch, coordinating their actions and providing digital cover. When they got to the Ferrari P4-5 Competizione, James realized that this time the security system was much more complex than usual. But thanks to Max's skill and his own resourcefulness, he managed to bypass all the obstacles. The car was started and they began their journey to freedom. The chase was inevitable. Security and police responded instantly. A shootout and a race began through the streets of Monte Carlo. Carla, demonstrating her highest level of driving, maneuvered between obstacles, leaving her pursuers behind. When they finally reached safety, James felt a mixture of relief and euphoria. They have once again proven that they are the best in the business. But at the same time, he understood that each new success made them even more vulnerable. While they celebrated their victory, James began to develop new plans. He knew that even more difficult tasks and dangerous adventures awaited them. But the main thing is that he believed in his team and was ready for any challenge. After all, nothing was impossible for him and his people. Their life was full of speed, adrenaline, and constant movement forward to new heights and victories. Following their success with the Ferrari P4-5 Competizione theft, James and his team realized they had reached a new level of skill and fame. But with this came new challenges. They needed to not only avoid prosecution, but also strengthen their position in the world of underground racing and theft. James decided it was time to expand his operations. He began to establish contacts with criminal networks throughout Europe in order to create a powerful network capable of ensuring their safety and access to new resources. One of these networks was in Italy, where one of the largest markets for stolen cars was located. To strengthen his position, 
James decided to organize an international race for elite stolen cars. This race was intended to attract the attention of the richest and most powerful people in Europe, as well as become a symbol of their unrivaled skill. The race would take place along the scenic roads of the Alps, starting in France and ending in Italy. Preparation for the race took several months. James and his team carefully planned the route to ensure the event was safe and discreet. They also modified their vehicles to increase their speed and maneuverability. Max developed a sophisticated communication and surveillance system to monitor all stages of the race. On race day, the atmosphere was filled with adrenaline and anticipation. The participants came from different parts of Europe. Each of them was ready to risk everything for the sake of victory. James and Carla, as always, were the center of attention. Their car, the unique Lamborghini Centenario, attracted admiring glances. The race got off to an exciting start. James and Carla immediately took the lead, using their skills and experience to negotiate tight turns and dangerous sections of the road. Other participants tried to keep up, and throughout the race there was a fierce battle for the lead, but not everything went smoothly. Halfway through the race, James received a message from Max that the Italian police were on their trail. They had to act quickly and decisively to avoid arrest. James decided to change the route and go away from the main roads. Carla showed off all her skills while driving the car along narrow and winding mountain paths. The police continued to pursue, but they were unable to catch up with James and his team. Eventually, they found shelter in an old mountain chalet where they could catch their breath and consider their next steps. James realized that their time in Europe was coming to an end. They needed to find a new location for their operations where they could continue their activities without the constant fear of being caught. He began planning a move to Asia, where criminal networks were even more extensive and secretive. Over the next weeks, James and his team prepared for the move. They sold some of their cars to secure financing and prepare new documents. Max hacked into several databases to create new identities for each team member. Finally, the day of departure arrived. James, Carla, Max, Emma, and Thomas left Europe, embarking on a long journey to the east. Their new hideout was in Hong Kong, where they could begin a new chapter in their lives. Hong Kong, with its busy streets and vibrant nightlife, was an ideal location for their operations. Here they quickly gained the respect and trust of local crime bosses. James began to organize new races and hijackings, adapting to new conditions and expanding his network. New adventures, new challenges, and new horizons awaited them. James knew that his life would always involve risk and danger, but that was what made it truly exciting. He and his team continued to move forward, remaining true to their principles and aspirations. And while they were together, no obstacles could stop them on the path to new heights and victories. Hong Kong has become a new home for James and his team, full of opportunities and challenges. Their successes in Europe had caught the attention of many, and now they had to prove their worth in this bustling city. James quickly realized that Hong Kong has its own rules of the game, and in order to survive, you need to play by them. The team settled in an old warehouse on the outskirts of the city, which they turned into a high-tech base. Emma and Max set up surveillance and hacking equipment, while Thomas and Carla modified cars. Everything was ready for new operations. The first major target in Hong Kong was the theft of an exclusive Pagani Huayra, exhibited in one of the most prestigious car dealerships. This hijacking was meant to show everyone that James and his team were capable of the impossible. The preparation took several weeks. James carefully studied the building plans, security routes, and security systems. Max hacked into internal cameras and installed fake videos to create the illusion of normal operation. Emma provided false documents and escape routes. The night of the operation arrived. James and Carla entered the dealership using fake passes. Their actions were precise and polished, like a surgeon. 
they quickly reached the Pagani Huayra and began working on its theft. The security system turned out to be more complex than expected, but thanks to Max's skill and James's technical knowledge, they managed to overcome all obstacles. When the car was ready to leave, the alarm suddenly went off. James knew he had to act quickly. Carla started the engine and they burst out of the dealership, breaking through the gate. The streets of Hong Kong became the stage for their daring escape. Max directed them along the least guarded routes, helping them avoid persecution. Eventually, they managed to reach their hideout. The Pagani Huayra was hidden and ready for further modification. This hijacking became a symbol of their success and attracted the attention of not only local crime bosses, but also international organizations. James began planning new operations. They began working to create a network of underground workshops and bases throughout Asia to expand their capabilities and increase security. The team understood that every new day brings new risks, but they were ready for anything. Hong Kong continued to live its hectic life, and James and his team became an integral part of it. They led double lives. By day, they were ordinary citizens, and by night, they were elusive car thieves whose actions aroused admiration and fear. New goals and new challenges lay ahead of them, and they knew that they could overcome any obstacles relying on their experience and skills. Days and nights blurred together in the bright lights of Hong Kong, where James and his team continued their daring operations. They became increasingly confident and sophisticated, raising the stakes and expanding their criminal enterprise. Each new theft confirmed their reputation and attracted new customers. One day, James learned about a private auction of rare cars that was to be held in one of the luxury hotels in Hong Kong. Among the cars for sale was a unique Koenigsegg Jesko, a car that could become the crown jewel of their collection. James understood that stealing this car would not only bring them a lot of money, but would also strengthen their position in the criminal world. Preparations for the auction began long before the event itself. Emma and Max conducted a detailed analysis of the hotel's security and security systems. Thomas developed a break-in plan while Carla prepared for a potential high-speed escape. Every step was thought out to the smallest detail to minimize risks. The night of the auction arrived and James and his team began executing their plan. They entered the hotel using fake passes and diversions. Max hacked into the CCTV systems, creating the illusion of normal operation while James and Carla headed to the underground garage where the cars were stored. When they reached the Koenigsegg Jesko, they were faced with a daunting task. Security was tight and their every move could be noticed. James and Carla acted carefully but quickly, bypassing security systems and disabling alarm sensors. Suddenly, one of the guards stumbled upon them. James, without losing his composure, neutralized him and they continued the operation. The car was started and Carla led it to the exit of the garage. The alarm went off and the guards began running towards their position. Carla burst out of the garage at full speed, barreling through checkpoints and maneuvering through the narrow streets of Hong Kong. Max coordinated their actions, guiding them along safe routes. Ultimately, they managed to escape and deliver the car to one of their hideouts. Koenigsegg Jesko was theirs, and it was a triumph. This hijacking became a symbol of their invincibility and skill, attracting the attention of new clients and partners. However, James understood that with every new success, the danger also grew. The police stepped up their efforts to catch them, and competitors continued to try to eliminate them from the game. James began to develop more complex and clever strategies to stay one step ahead of everyone. They continued to expand their network, establishing contacts with crime bosses throughout Asia. New workshops and shelters appeared in Singapore, Tokyo, and Shanghai. Each city became a new arena for their operations, and each new business brought them not only money, but also respect. Despite the dangers, James and his team were not going to stop. They knew that new challenges and adventures awaited them, 
Their life was full of adrenaline, speed, and constant movement. And while they were together, no obstacles could stop them on the path to new heights and victories. Hong Kong has become a real labyrinth for James and his team, but their successes have attracted the attention of not only the police, but also influential individuals who want to use their talents for their own purposes. One day, James received a mysterious message from an unknown sender who suggested a meeting in one of the most secretive and dangerous areas of the city. James decided to take a risk and find out what was behind it. The meeting took place in an abandoned warehouse on the outskirts of Hong Kong. There, a man named Victor Lon, known as the Shadow in criminal circles, was waiting for James. Victor offered James a task that could change their whole lives steal a rare prototype car developed by one of the largest Asian corporations. This car was equipped with the latest technology and cost a fortune. Victor offered an incredible amount of money to complete this task, but warned that the security would be top-notch and any mistakes could cost lives. James realized that this task would be the most difficult and dangerous of their careers. He discussed the offer with the team, and they decided to accept the challenge. Careful preparations began. Max hacked into the corporation's internal systems to gain access to building plans and security routes. Emma created false documents and made escape plans. Thomas has developed special devices to bypass the latest security systems. The operation was scheduled for the night, when security was minimal. James and Carla entered the corporation using fake passes. Their path took them through multiple layers of security, including biometric scanners and laser traps. Max was in touch, coordinating their actions and helping them overcome all obstacles. When they got to the laboratory where the prototype was stored, it turned out that access to it was protected by a system that could not be hacked remotely. James had to use all his skills and improvise on the spot. He found a weak point in the system and managed to bypass it, opening access to the car. Carla started the prototype and they began their way to the exit. But then the alarm went off and the guards began running towards their position. The real race for survival has begun. Carla, demonstrating incredible driving skill, maneuvered between obstacles and evaded pursuit. Max coordinated their actions, directing them along the safest routes. Suddenly, a helicopter with armed men appeared on their way. The situation was becoming critical. Thomas suggested using special devices to disable the helicopter. James agreed, and they activated the device, creating an electromagnetic pulse that disabled the helicopter. Finally, they managed to hide in one of their hideouts on the outskirts of the city. The prototype was theirs, and they handed it over to Victor Lan receiving the promised reward. This mission became their greatest success, but also attracted the attention of international agencies and intelligence agencies. James realized that their game had reached a new level. Now, they were not just car thieves, but participants in a global game where the stakes were incredibly high. He began to develop plans to further expand their operations and protect them from new threats. New challenges and dangers awaited them ahead, but James and his team were ready for any challenge. Their life has turned into a continuous adventure, full of risk and adrenaline. And although every new day brought new dangers, they knew that together they could overcome any obstacles on the way to their goals. After a successful operation with a prototype car, James and his team realized that they had now become a target for international agencies and intelligence services. This meant that they had to act even more carefully and secretly. James began to look for new shelters and connections that could provide them with safety and support. One day, James received an unexpected offer from a famous crime boss in Tokyo, Mr. Ito. Ito was known for his network of underground casinos and illegal racing throughout Japan. He offered to cooperate with James, steal a rare Lexus LFA for him from one of the most protected collections in Tokyo in exchange for permanent protection and access to his resources. James understood that this task would be no less difficult than the previous ones, 
but it opened up new opportunities for his team. He discussed the offer with the team, and they decided to accept the challenge. Preparations for the operation began immediately. Emma and Max conducted research into the collection's security system, which was equipped with the latest technology, including biometric scanners and security robots. Thomas developed a penetration plan, taking into account all possible risks. Carla trained in simulators to be prepared for any unexpected situations on the road. The night of the operation arrived. James and Carla, disguised as security guards, entered the collection area. Their path ran through many levels of security. Max hacked into internal systems to disable CCTV cameras and create the illusion of normal operation. Emma secured fake passes and prepared escape routes. When they got to the Lexus LFA, the security system suddenly changed. James realized that someone might have found out about their plan and changed the settings. He quickly decided to use the alternative route that Thomas had provided in case of unforeseen circumstances. They bypassed several additional layers of security and disabled the last defense mechanisms. Carla started the Lexus LFA and they began their escape. The guards began to come running and the pursuit was inevitable. Carla showed off her driving skills as she broke through roadblocks and maneuvered through the narrow streets of Tokyo. Max coordinated their actions, directing them along the safest routes. When they finally reached safety, Mr. Ito greeted them personally and was impressed by their work. He provided James and his team with the necessary resources and protection, as promised. In return, he offered them participation in organizing the largest underground race, which was to take place in Japan. James and his team began preparing for the race. This was not just a competition, but a real test of their skills and endurance. They modified their cars to achieve maximum speed and maneuverability. Each team member worked on their own section to ensure success in the race. Finally, race day arrived. The streets of Tokyo were filled with adrenaline junkies and spectators. James and Carla went to the starting line, ready for the most important test of their lives. The race got off to a furious start as the cars raced through the city streets, negotiating incredible speeds and dangerous turns. James could feel the adrenaline pulsing through his veins as they surged forward. Carla maneuvered between cars, avoiding obstacles and outpacing her rivals. Max, Emma, and Thomas followed their movements, coordinating every step. The race was tense until the very end. But thanks to Carla's skill and teamwork, they crossed the finish line first. This was their greatest achievement and confirmed their status as the best in the world. After the race, James and his team realized that they had become not only legends of the underground world, but also the target of many. Now, they had to act even more carefully and develop new strategies. New challenges and adventures lay ahead of them, and they knew that together they could overcome any obstacles in their path. After their triumph in the underground race in Tokyo, James and his team became true legends, their names were on the lips of everyone involved in the world of illegal racing and car theft. But with this success came new dangers. James understood that every new day brought more attention and threats. One such threat was the mysterious organization known as the Black Lotus. This group specialized in high-tech crimes and sought to eliminate all competitors in the criminal world. They learned of James and his team's accomplishments and decided it was time to eliminate them. One evening, while James and his team were relaxing in their hideout, they were attacked. Unknown armed men burst into their base and a shootout began. James and his team, using their skills and pre-prepared evacuation plans, were able to fight back and escape. But this attack sent a clear message. The Black Lotus would not stop until it destroyed them. Realizing that they needed to act quickly, James decided to go on the offensive. He collected information about the Black Lotus and found out that their main headquarters was located in one of the abandoned skyscrapers in the center of Hong Kong. This place was equipped with the most modern security systems, and it was almost impossible to penetrate there. 
but James knew that this was their only chance to stop the threat once and for all. The operation to destroy the Black Lotus began with careful preparation. Max hacked the skyscraper's security systems to gain access to its internal structure. Emma created false documents and provided infiltration routes. Thomas developed a plan of attack, taking into account all possible risks. Carla, as always, prepared for extreme driving in case a quick escape was necessary. The night of the operation arrived. James and his team infiltrated the skyscraper using fake passes and avoiding security cameras. Their path ran through a maze of corridors and security levels. They moved quickly and silently, neutralizing guards and avoiding traps. When they reached the Black Lotus headquarters, a fierce battle began. James and his team used their skills and teamwork to defeat their opponents. Max disabled the main security systems, giving them the advantage. Emma coordinated the actions, and Carla was ready for any development of events. As a result, James and his team were able to capture the leader of the Black Lotus and destroy their base. This victory not only protected them from the threat, but also strengthened their position in the criminal world. However, they understood that they could not relax. The world of crime was full of surprises and dangers, and every new day brought new challenges. After this, James decided it was time to expand their operations to other continents. They began planning a move to South America, where criminal networks were even more extensive and complex. It was a new beginning and new horizons. The move to South America was not easy. They had to adapt to new conditions and look for new contacts. The Amazon jungle and the megacities of Brazil became their new arena of operations. James and his team began building new hideouts and bases, establishing connections with local crime bosses. One day, James learned about a large gang that controlled underground racing and car thefts in Rio de Janeiro. This gang was known for its brutality and influence. James realized that in order to establish themselves in South America, they would need to fight this gang and prove their superiority. Preparations for a new operation began. James and his team studied the terrain, race plans, and the gang security system. They developed a strategy to strike the final blow and gain the respect of the local criminal establishment. The day of the operation arrived. James and Carla went to the start of the race, ready for the most important test of their lives. Races in Rio were more dangerous and unpredictable than any other. The city streets were full of obstacles and unexpected turns. The race got off to a furious start. James and Carla raced through the streets of Rio, going through incredible speeds and dangerous areas. Max, Emma, and Thomas followed their movements, coordinating every step. Throughout the race, they faced many obstacles and dangers, but thanks to Carla's skill and teamwork, they were able to cross the finish line first. This victory strengthened their position in South America and earned them the respect of local crime bosses. James and his team knew that new challenges and adventures awaited them. Their life has turned into a continuous adventure, full of risk and adrenaline. And although every new day brought new dangers, they knew that together they could overcome any obstacles on their way to new heights and victories. Following their triumph in Rio de Janeiro, James and his team became respected not only in South America, but throughout the world. However, their successes attracted the attention not only of criminal circles, but also of international intelligence agencies. James knew that now they had to be even more careful and resourceful. One day, James received an offer from an old friend, a former Interpol agent who now worked for one of the largest criminal organizations in the world. He offered James participation in the largest theft in history, to steal a collection of rare cars from a private museum belonging to one of the most powerful people in the world. This museum was located on a private island in the Caribbean, and security was top-notch. James knew this would be their most difficult and dangerous plan, but also their most profitable. He decided to accept the challenge and began careful preparation. Emma and Max set out to investigate the museum's security system. 
they learned that the island was guarded not only by armed men, but also by high-tech systems, including drones and automated turrets. Thomas developed an infiltration plan that included using underwater drones and climbing equipment to scale the walls of the museum. Carla was preparing for some extreme driving on the island's winding roads. The operation began with a quiet boat approach to the island at night. James and his team used underwater drones to disarm underwater sensors and mines. When they reached the shore, Thomas used climbing gear to scale the walls and disarm the security systems. Once inside, they began to act quickly and decisively. Max hacked into CCTV systems and created false recordings to prevent security from noticing their presence. Emma turned off the alarm and they began moving the rare cars from the museum into specially prepared shipping containers. Suddenly, an alarm went off on the island. It turned out that one of the guards noticed their actions and called for reinforcements. A shootout began, and James realized that time was running out. Carla started one of the stolen cars, and they began a swift escape along the narrow and dangerous roads of the island. The drones and turrets opened fire, but Max was able to disable some of the security systems, giving them a chance to escape. They raced along winding roads, dodging pursuers and avoiding traps. In the end, they managed to get to the boat and left the island, taking with them the priceless cars. The hijacking was their greatest triumph, but also their most dangerous. International intelligence agencies began an active search, and James realized that they needed to lie low. They decided to go to Australia, where they could hide for a while and prepare for new challenges. In Australia, James and his team began to build a new network of contacts and shelters. They chose a remote ranch in the desert where they could calmly plan their further actions. Max and Emma upgraded equipment to ensure maximum safety, and Thomas developed new strategies for future operations. Despite the temporary lull, James knew that new adventures and dangers awaited them. Their life remained full of adrenaline and continuous movement. They were ready for any challenge that might come their way. And although every new day brought new threats, James believed that together they could overcome any obstacles and reach new heights. The heat of the Australian desert and the solitude of the ranch gave James and his team the opportunity to rest and rethink their next steps. But the calm was deceptive. James understood that they could not stay out of sight for long, and sooner or later new challenges would find them. At one of his meetings with local crime bosses, James heard about a new threat. An international criminal organization known as the Phoenix has begun to expand its influence in Australia. Their leader, Alexander Wolfe, was a ruthless and ambitious leader, seeking to destroy all competitors and take control of all illegal activities on the continent. James understood that sooner or later the Phoenix would pay attention to them and decided to launch a preemptive strike. Together with his team, he began to develop a plan to neutralize Wolf and his organization. It was risky, but necessary for their survival. The first step was collecting information. Max hacked into several secure servers to obtain data on Phoenix bases and operations. Emma developed false documents to secure access to key facilities. Thomas and Carla prepared machinery and equipment for the upcoming operations. The team soon learned that Wolf was planning a major arms deal on the black market. James decided this was the perfect opportunity to strike and ruin Wolf's plans. They prepared a carefully planned operation to disrupt the deal and capture the Phoenix leader. The night of the operation arrived. James and Carla entered the abandoned factory where the deal was to take place. Max coordinated their actions from a safe location, relaying information about the guards' movements and Wolf's preparations. Emma provided fake passes and provided diversions. Once the deal started, James and Carla were ready to take action. They quickly and silently neutralized the guards and captured key positions. Wolf, not expecting such an attack, tried to escape but was captured by James. The deal was broken, and Wolf ended up in the hands of James. This operation not only destroyed Phoenix's plans, 
but also strengthen James's position in the Australian criminal world. He has proven that he is ready to defend his interests and is not afraid to engage in battle with the most dangerous opponents. However, this victory brought new challenges. The Phoenix organization began hunting for James and his team. They understood that now they needed to be even more careful and think through every step. James decided to strengthen his network of contacts and create new hideouts across the continent to stay out of reach of his enemies. They began to develop new operations and strategies to counter the Phoenix and other threats. James understood that their path would be full of dangers, but he believed in the strength of his team and their ability to overcome any obstacles. New adventures awaited them ahead, and James knew that they could cope with any challenge. Their life remained full of adrenaline and continuous movement, and although every new day brought new threats, they were ready for any challenges and continued to move forward to new heights and victories. After the capture of Alexander Wolfe, James and his team found themselves in a new reality. The operation in Australia gave them a great opportunity, but it also put them in the crosshairs of anyone looking for a way to rise in the criminal world. Now, their strategy had changed. They could no longer act as before. The time has come for new tactics and unexpected moves. Moving to Australia was not only a tactical maneuver, but also a chance for renewal. Inspired by the vast deserts and hidden oases, the team began to create a new base. This time it was not just a shelter, but a high-tech fortress capable of withstanding any threat. Thomas and Max developed new security systems using the latest advances in science and technology. Emma, with her talent for disguise and forgery, provided the team with new identities and legends. Now they have become elusive, capable of disappearing and appearing where they were least expected. Carla trained at the training ground, practicing maneuvers in conditions as close as possible to combat conditions. James began making connections with local crime bosses, strengthening his network. They entered into an alliance with Jack the Snake Reynolds, a legendary smuggler who knew every nook and cranny of Australia. Together they began to build a network of underground operations, including illegal racing and smuggling of rare goods. However, Phoenix was not going to retreat. In response to Wolf's capture, they began attacks on James's allies in an attempt to destroy his network. This made James act even more decisively. He developed a counterattack plan that included infiltrating the Phoenix's main base and destroying their key assets. The infiltration was planned for the night when security was minimal. James and his team used the latest technology to bypass security systems. They moved silently and quickly, using fake passes and laser cutters to penetrate the most secure areas. Inside the base, they found a lot of evidence of Phoenix's criminal activities. Max hacked their servers and downloaded all the data that could be useful in the future. But the main goal was the destruction of weapons and drug warehouses, which would deal a serious blow to the organization. Operation was successfully completed. They left the Phoenix base in ruins, blowing up warehouses and servers. This victory not only weakened their enemies, but also strengthened their reputation. Now James and his team were known as elusive Avengers, capable of destroying any threat. However, after every success came new challenges. James understood that their life would never be calm, but he also knew that with such a team they could overcome any obstacles, New horizons, new operations, and new victories lay ahead of them, and although dangers lurked at every turn, they were prepared for them, continuing their journey in a world where speed and cunning meant everything. The Australian desert became a temporary refuge for James and his team, a place where they could gather their thoughts and plan their next steps. But the calm did not last long. After the destruction of the Phoenix base, they realized that they still had a lot of work to do. A few weeks after the operation, James received a message from an old ally, an informant named Raphael, who worked for one of Asia's largest crime syndicates. 
he said that Phoenix was planning a major deal in Shanghai involving the smuggling of rare artifacts and high-tech equipment. This deal could restore their strength and resources after their defeat in Australia. James knew he had to act quickly and decisively. He assembled a team and began preparations for the next operation. The plan was to infiltrate the deal, disrupt it, and seize artifacts and equipment to weaken Phoenix and strengthen their position. Max hacked several security systems to gain access to the plans of the building where the deal was to take place. Emma prepared forged documents and developed infiltration and escape routes. Thomas provided the necessary equipment and technology, and Carla trained in simulators to be prepared for any unexpected situations. The night of the operation arrived. They arrived in Shanghai disguised as businessmen and security officers. Entering the building, they moved silently and carefully, avoiding cameras and security patrols. Max coordinated their actions from cover, providing information in real time. When they got to the transaction site, it turned out that the security was much stronger than expected. James and Carla used diversions and smoke grenades to neutralize the guards. They captured artifacts and equipment, but suddenly, additional Phoenix forces appeared. A shootout began. The team acted coherently and confidently, using their skills and prepared equipment. Thomas provided cover while Max used his hacking abilities to confuse opponents and disable security systems. As a result, they managed to escape from the building and hide in the maze of Shanghai streets. Carla, driving a car with artifacts and equipment, rushed through the city at night, avoiding pursuit. They reached a safe place and checked the loot. Among the artifacts were not only rare historical treasures, but also the latest technology that could be useful in their future operations. This victory not only weakened the Phoenix, but also brought valuable resources to James and his team. They returned to Australia to consider their next steps. James understood that their struggle was far from over, and new challenges lay ahead. They began to develop new strategies and plans to continue their activities and stay one step ahead of their enemies. The team was full of determination and readiness for new adventures. James knew that together they could overcome any obstacles and reach new heights. New operations, new opponents, and new dangers awaited them ahead. But James and his team were ready for any challenge. Their lives continued to be full of adrenaline and constant movement and they knew that their story was far from over. The victory in Shanghai was a major milestone for James and his team. The realization that they could not only protect their interests, but also actively resist the Phoenix gave them confidence. But there was no time to relax. They knew that every success brought them closer to new danger. Returning to Australia, the team began analyzing new technologies and artifacts captured in Shanghai. Among the equipment were prototypes of devices capable of hacking even the most secure security systems. Max and Thomas began studying and modernizing them to use in their operations. Meanwhile, James decided to establish contact with another powerful criminal network operating in the Pacific region. These people were known as the Pacific Shadows, masters of smuggling and covert operations. James understood that cooperation with them could be decisive in the fight against Phoenix. The meeting with the Pacific Shadows was scheduled on one of the hidden islands in the Pacific Ocean. James and Carla went there on a specially prepared boat equipped with hidden tracking and protection technologies. They arrived on the island where they were met by the leader of the Shadows, a man named Hiroto. He was secretive and cautious, but interested in working with James. Hiroto offered James an exchange, information about Phoenix bases in exchange for assistance in an operation to seize a large shipment of weapons that was supposed to pass through one of the ports of Australia. James agreed, realizing that this cooperation would bring mutual benefit. The operation began with careful preparation. Max hacked the port security systems and monitored the movement of cargo. Emma created fake documents and routes to move the shipment of weapons. 
Thomas and Carla provided equipment and transport, and James coordinated all activities. The day of the operation arrived. The team entered the port under the guise of security officers. Their goal was clearly defined, to seize the cargo and remove it from the port without attracting too much attention. Max coordinated their actions, transmitting information about the movements of guards and patrols. When they got to the desired container, it turned out that security had been strengthened. James and Carla used diversions and smoke grenades to neutralize the guards. They began to load weapons into their vehicles, but suddenly additional security forces appeared. A shootout began. The team acted coherently and confidently, using their skills and prepared equipment. Thomas provided cover and Carla expertly drove the vehicle, avoiding obstacles and evading pursuit. Ultimately, they managed to escape from the port and deliver the cargo to the safe base of the Pacific Shadows. Hiroto was impressed by their professionalism and kept his promise, providing James with valuable information about the Phoenix bases. With this information, James began to develop a plan for a large-scale attack on key Phoenix installations. They knew it would be a risky operation, but they also knew it could be a decisive blow to the enemy. The team worked day and night preparing for the operation. They developed several action plans taking into account all possible scenarios. Each team member was prepared for any eventuality, understanding that their lives and freedom were at stake. Finally, the day of the operation arrived. James and his team went to the Phoenix's first base, located in the desert. They entered the territory using fake documents and the latest technology. Their goal was simple, to destroy key resources and destabilize the organization. The operation began with the capture of the command center. Max hacked the security systems and disabled the base's main defenses. Thomas and Carla neutralized the guards and planted explosives in the weapons and equipment warehouses. When everything was ready, James gave the signal to retreat. They left the base minutes before the explosion, leaving the Phoenix without critical resources. This was only the first of many operations aimed at destroying the power of the Phoenix. New goals and new challenges lay ahead of them, but James and his team were ready for any challenge continuing their path to the top of the criminal world. Their story is far from over, and every new day brought new adventures and new victories. After a successful operation in the desert, James and his team returned to Australia with renewed strength and determination. They understood that Phoenix would not give up trying to take revenge, so it was necessary to continue the offensive. However, this time they decided to act more sophisticatedly and use unexpected moves. One day, James received a tip from his informant Raphael that Phoenix was planning a major event, an elite undercover car race to be held in Monaco. This race attracted the attention of not only wealthy adrenaline junkies, but also powerful criminal figures from all over the world. James realized that this was a great opportunity to strike at the enemy and at the same time hit a big jackpot. The team began preparing for the operation. Carla, known for her driving skills, became a key player in this regard. They modified one of their cars, turning it into a real beast on wheels, capable of winning the toughest races. Max and Thomas worked on improving all the car's systems so that it was not only fast, but also reliable. Emma, as always, was busy forging documents and creating a legend for Carla. She became a new, little-known, but promising racer capable of outshining her rivals. James developed an action plan that included not only participation in the race, but also a parallel operation to collect information and neutralize key Phoenix figures. The day of the race arrived. Carla arrived in Monaco disguised as a participant ready for extreme challenges. James and Max coordinated the team's actions from their mobile headquarters located on a yacht in the port. Emma provided cover and diversions to ensure their actions went undetected. The race has begun. Carla took the lead from the first seconds, demonstrating incredible skill. She maneuvered between cars, negotiating dangerous turns and narrow streets of Monaco. 
but the team's goal was not only to win the race. Max, using his hacking skills, connected to the security systems and began collecting data on the criminal figures present at the event. During the race, Carla noticed that several cars began to follow. These were racers working for Phoenix, whose goal was to eliminate her and thwart James's plan. The real battle on wheels has begun. Carla, demonstrating her skill, avoided attacks and counterattacked, leaving her pursuers behind. While Carla provided the distraction, James and Emma infiltrated the hotel where Phoenix's key figures were staying. Their goal was clear, to collect incriminating data and leave the devices for further surveillance. At the same time, Max continued hacking systems and collecting information, directing the team's actions in real time. The finish of the race was approaching. Carla, despite all the difficulties, maintained a leading position. At the last moment, when it seemed that victory was already in hand, one of the pursuers went for a ram. Carla used incredible reflexes to dodge and cross the finish line first. Winning the race brought not only recognition and respect, but also the opportunity to walk away with important information. James and Emma returned to the yacht, where Max was waiting for them with the collected data. They learned of several major Phoenix operations that they could now prevent. The return to Australia was marked by new plans. James began developing a series of operations to neutralize the Phoenix at key locations around the world. They decided to act quickly and decisively before the enemy had time to recover from the blow. The team understood that their fight was just beginning. New challenges and dangers were inevitable, but they were ready for them. Their story continued, and new adventures and victories awaited them. In a world where speed and cunning were everything, James and his team were consummate masters of their game. The victory in Monaco and subsequent operations against Phoenix attracted the attention of not only international intelligence agencies, but also competitors in the criminal world. It was inevitable. In a world where everyone strives for the top, the success of James and his team has made them the target of the most cruel and ruthless enemies. The first alarming news came from Emma. She was working on gathering information in one of her hideouts when suddenly the connection with her was lost. James immediately realized that something was wrong. They went to the place, but it was too late. Emma was found dead, her laptop and all her data gone. A threatening inscription left by competitors remained on the wall. We'll come for you. The shock of losing Emma only strengthened the team's resolve. They knew they had to be even more careful now. Every step, every operation could be the last. However, they continued their activities, realizing that stopping would mean defeat. A few weeks later, more tragic news arrived. Max was working on yet another hack of the security systems of one of the Phoenix facilities when he was attacked. He managed to transmit the data to James, but was seriously wounded. James and Carla arrived on the scene to save him, but Max died in their arms. It was a brutal blow to the team. Max was not only a key specialist, but also a friend. Thomas and Carla, left alone with James, realized that their time might also be limited they decided to strike back. Their target was one of the leaders of a rival gang involved in the murders of Emma and Max. They devised a plan to eliminate him and weaken the gang's influence. The operation went quickly and decisively. James and Carla infiltrated a rival meeting by setting up an ambush. In the ensuing firefight, they were able to eliminate the target, but the cost was high. Thomas was mortally wounded and died at the scene. The loss of Thomas was another heavy blow for James and Carla. They were left alone, but were not going to give up. Their determination only strengthened. James and Carla knew they now had to finish what they started. They decided to carry out a final operation against Phoenix and its competitors in order to end the threat once and for all. They started with careful preparation. James gathered all his remaining resources and contacts to organize a massive attack on the enemy's main bases. Carla trained day and night, preparing herself for the decisive battle. The day of the operation arrived. 
They attacked several key targets at once, destroying bases and weapons depots. Each attack was thoughtful and precise. James and Carla acted quickly and quietly, using all their skills and experience. Eventually, they made it to Phoenix's main base. A fierce battle ensued, but James and Carla, supported by their remaining allies, were victorious. The Phoenix leaders were eliminated and their organization destroyed. However, the victory came at a high price. James and Carla were left alone, having lost almost all their friends and allies. They knew their journey had been filled with pain and loss, but they also knew they had made the world a little safer by taking down one of the world's most dangerous criminal networks. Now they faced a new challenge, to survive and find the meaning of life in a new world. They decided to hide and start a new life, leaving behind their bloody past. Their story continued, but in a new way, where there was no place for old enemies and old battles. The victory over Phoenix and their competitors left James and Carla at the beginning of a new life. Leaving behind destruction and loss, they decided to use their skills and experience for new purposes. But fate had unexpected turns in store for them. One day, while they were relaxing on one of the quiet beaches in Australia, a stranger approached them. He introduced himself as Michael Drake, a representative of an international organization involved in the investigation and prevention of crimes. Michael knew about James and Carla's past, but instead of arresting them, he offered to cooperate. The organization known as The Talon was dedicated to combating the most dangerous criminal networks around the world. Michael said that they needed their help to complete particularly difficult missions. James and Carla, tired of constantly running and fighting for survival, decided to consider this offer. Their first mission was an operation in Russia, where one of the largest criminal groups was developing a new type of cyber weapon capable of hacking any security systems. James and Carla were sent undercover to Moscow to find out where exactly these weapons were being developed and how they could be neutralized. Under the guise of wealthy tourists, they infiltrated the circles of local crime bosses. Carla used her driving skills to attract attention at illegal races, and James made contacts with local hackers and informants. They found out that the laboratory where the weapons were developed was located in one of the old factories on the outskirts of the city. The operation began at night. James and Carla entered the plant using forged documents and the latest hacking technology. They reached the laboratory and found that the weapon was almost ready for use. James uploaded a virus into the laboratory systems to neutralize the weapon and destroy data on its development. But as soon as they tried to leave, the security system was activated. A brutal firefight began. James and Carla, using their skills and experience, made their way to the exit. They realized that they had been discovered and called for reinforcements. They managed to escape from the factory and hide in the maze of Moscow streets. When they returned to the Talon base, Michael was impressed with their work. They not only neutralized the threat, but also collected valuable information about the international connections of criminal groups. This information helped the organization conduct a series of successful operations around the world. James and Carla became permanent members of the Talon. They traveled to different countries, carrying out missions that helped destroy criminal networks and prevent major crimes. Their lives were once again filled with adrenaline and danger, but now they knew that they were making the world a better place. In one of the missions, they had to go to Brazil, where a large drug cartel had taken hostages and threatened to blow up a dam, which could lead to catastrophic consequences. James and Carla, working with local authorities, developed a plan to rescue the hostages and neutralize the threat. They infiltrated the drug cartel's camp using their camouflage and hacking skills. Carla, distracting the guards, allowed James to reach the hostages and free them. They then planted explosives in the cartel's warehouses, destroying the cartel's stockpiles of drugs and weapons. As a result, the operation was successful, the hostages were rescued, and the cartel suffered serious losses. 
Each new mission strengthened their resolve and belief that they could change the world for the better. James and Carla became true Talon legends. Their names were known in criminal circles around the world. But they knew there was still a lot of work ahead. So, their story continued, full of new adventures and dangers. They were not going to stop because their mission was just beginning. Together they continued to move forward, confronting evil and protecting those who could not protect themselves. With each successful completion of the mission, James and Carla gained new enemies. Enemies from the past, new criminal organizations, and those who have lost their power and wealth due to the actions of the Talon. The world around them became more and more dangerous. One day they received the task of preventing an attack on an international summit that was to be held in Paris. This mission proved to be extremely difficult as several criminal gangs banded together to thwart their efforts. Not only people from Phoenix became enemies, but also new, previously unknown organizations. Arriving in Paris, James and Carla began their preparations. They established surveillance of key facilities and studied plans for possible attacks. But the enemies were not asleep either. They began to pursue James and Carla, ambushing and attacking them. Life has become a continuous struggle for survival. One night, as they were returning to their temporary base, their car was attacked. Carla, showing her incredible reaction and driving skills, was able to escape from her pursuers, but their situation became increasingly critical. The enemies knew their location and began hunting. James and Carla decided to change tactics. They abandoned their communication devices and moved to a completely autonomous existence, relying only on their skills and instincts. They began to move around Paris, hiding in abandoned buildings and underground tunnels, avoiding cameras and patrols. At this time, they learned that the enemies were planning to use a powerful explosive device to destroy the building where the summit was to take place. They had very little time left. James and Carla gathered all their remaining resources and decided, take a decisive step. They knew that they would have to act quickly and without room for error. Using their skills and connections, they learned that the explosive device had already been delivered to Paris and was located in one of the warehouses on the outskirts of the city. James and Carla developed a plan to break in. They chose a night when security was minimal and began their operation. Having made their way into the warehouse, they discovered that the enemies were expecting their appearance. A fierce firefight began. James and Carla used all their skills to fend off the attacks and make their way to the goal. Every step was worth its weight in gold. Every moment could be the last. When they got to the device, it turned out that its protection was much more complex than they had expected. Time was ticking, and decontamination required maximum concentration. Carla, using her knowledge of engineering, began work on the device while James protected her from the attackers. At the last moment, Carla managed to defuse the explosive device. They made it on time, but this was only the first step. The enemies were not going to stop. James and Carla knew that their situation was becoming increasingly dangerous and that they now needed to go into hiding to prepare for the next stage of the fight. They contacted Michael Drake of the Talon, who organized their evacuation from Paris. Aboard the helicopter that took them into the air, James and Carla discussed their next steps. It was obvious that their enemies had united and became much stronger, but they still had determination and the will to fight. Arriving at a new secret base located in the mountains of Switzerland, they began to plan their next actions. James and Carla understood that it was necessary to strike a decisive blow against their enemies in order to protect themselves and their allies. They developed a series of operations aimed at disrupting the supply chains and financial flows of their enemies. They started with the largest and most important facility, the bank, through which the main financial flows of the enemies passed. Having made their way inside under the guise of security officers, they installed data collection devices and prepared a plan to destroy the servers. As a result of their actions, 
the enemy lost significant funds and control over their operations. The next step was an attack on several warehouses with weapons and equipment. James and Carla acted decisively and quickly, destroying enemy supplies and disrupting their plans. They knew that each such operation brought them closer to victory. However, the enemies did not sit idly by. They launched counterattacks in an attempt to destroy James and Carla. The battle became even more fierce, and every day brought new dangers. James and Carla understood that their lives were now a constant struggle for survival, but they were not going to give up. They knew their mission was important and that they could change the world for the better. Together, they continued to move forward, overcoming obstacles and defeating enemies. Their story was far from over, and new challenges and new victories awaited them. After a number of successful operations against their enemies, James and Carla decided it was time to change tactics. They realized they had to go beyond their usual methods and use new, unexpected approaches to stay ahead of the curve. One day they received a strange message delivered through several anonymous sources. The message contained coordinates and a password to a hidden database located on a server on the deep web. The information they could obtain was incredibly important, a complete list of their enemies' agents and resources. Using their skills and caution, James and Carla were able to break into the database and extract information. But they also discovered that their activities were being tracked by an unknown third party. This side called themselves the Ghosts, a group of hackers who fought corruption and crime around the world, remaining in the shadows. James decided to contact the Ghosts and offer cooperation. Their leader, a man under the pseudonym Cypher, agreed to the meeting. They met in an abandoned factory on the outskirts of Berlin. Cypher turned out to be a young but extremely talented hacker who knew more about James and Carl than they realized. Collaboration with Ghosts opened up new opportunities. Together, they began to develop a plan to eliminate key enemy figures using cyber attacks and disinformation. Cypher proposed starting with the largest operation, hacking the control system of drones used by enemies for surveillance and attacks. The operation began with careful preparation. Cypher and his team hacked the central server, and James and Carla began introducing false data and viruses into the control system. At the same time, the ghosts provided protection for their actions from possible counterattacks. Once everything was ready, James and Carla began the operation. They introduced a virus that reprogrammed enemy drones to self-destruct. Suddenly, several drones got out of control and began attacking the bases of their own masters. This caused chaos and panic among the enemies, weakening their position. But that was only the beginning. The ghosts conveyed information to James that the enemies were preparing a large-scale operation to seize oil platforms in the Persian Gulf. If this operation had succeeded, they would have gained control of a significant portion of the region's energy resources. James and Carla began developing a plan to prevent this operation. They contacted local authorities and organized joint efforts with the ghosts. Together, they began working to destroy the infrastructure needed to take over the platforms. The operation in the Persian Gulf was incredibly complex. James and Carla, together with local intelligence agencies and the ghosts, infiltrated oil platforms under the guise of technical personnel. Their goal was clear, to prevent the capture and destroy enemy equipment. When the enemies began their operation, James and Carla were ready. They activated the prepared explosives and began attacking the enemy forces. In the ensuing battle, they used all their skills and resources to prevent the capture and protect the platforms. As a result, the enemy's operation failed. They suffered serious losses and were forced to retreat. James and Carla had another important victory, but they knew the fight wasn't over yet. Ghosts offered to continue cooperation, and James and Carla agreed. Together, they developed new strategies and plans aimed at destroying criminal networks around the world. They understood that every day brought new challenges, but now 
they had new allies and new opportunities. Their story continued, full of unexpected twists and dangers. James and Carla remained on the front lines of the fight against crime, with new missions and victories ahead of them. After a successful operation in the Persian Gulf, James and Carla realized that their mission had become even larger and more significant. Together with the ghosts, they began to actively act against criminal networks around the world. However, with each successful strike against their enemies, their own lives became more and more dangerous. One day, Cypher informed James and Carla about the existence of a secret organization behind most of the major criminal networks. This organization, known as The Shadow, controlled many of their enemies and was incredibly powerful. The Ghosts proposed to join forces to deal a decisive blow to The Shadow. James and Carla agreed. They knew that this could be their most difficult mission yet, but they also knew that destroying The Shadow could finally weaken their enemies and bring peace to their lives. They began planning the operation with The Ghosts, using all available resources and information. The Shadow's control center was located in a deeply hidden underground complex in one of the most secure areas in the world. The entire operation required careful preparation and coordinated actions. James and Carla, along with the Ghost Team, developed an infiltration plan that included the use of the most advanced technology and cunning strategies. When the day of the operation arrived, they entered the complex undercover. Using forged documents and hacking security systems, they reached the central command post. The leaders of the Shadow, well-prepared and armed, were waiting for them there. A fierce battle ensued. James and Carla, together with the Ghosts, fought for every meter using all their skills and experience. They managed to neutralize several key figures of the Shadow and download a virus into their systems, which paralyzed the entire infrastructure of the organization. As the battle reached its climax, James came face to face with the leader of the Shadow, the man who was behind many years of chaos and destruction. In a tense battle, James was able to gain the upper hand and finally destroy the enemy. However, this was not easy for him. He was seriously injured. Carla, seeing the injured James, was able to take him to safety, where they were evacuated by the ghosts. The leader of the Shadow was defeated, and their organization was destroyed. It was the end of a long and grueling war. They returned to Australia, where James began his recovery from his injury. During this time, Carla and Cypher set about eliminating the remaining threats and consolidating the peace they had fought for so long. Gradually, the world became safer and criminal networks were broken up. James and Carla realized that now they had a chance to start a new life, free from constant threat. They decided to go into the shadows, leave their fighting and begin a new chapter where they can enjoy the world they helped create. The story of James and Carla was coming to an end. They became symbols of struggle and victory over evil. Their names remained in the legends of the criminal world as those who were able to change the course of history. A new life awaited them, full of hope and peace. But they're not done yet. There was a final step ahead, a final operation that would finally destroy the remnants of the Shadow and ensure peace for their future. This mission was the most important, and they knew they had to complete it to change the world forever. James's recovery took several months. At this time, Carla and Cypher continued to fight, destroying the remaining elements of the Shadow and strengthening their positions. However, despite their best efforts, they knew that the final blow to the Shadow was yet to come. Once James recovered, he and Carla decided it was time to strike the final decisive blow. All information gathered pointed to the remaining leaders of the Shadow hiding in an abandoned military complex in the mountains of Switzerland. The place was virtually impenetrable, but James and Carla knew they had to get in there and put an end to this threat once and for all. Preparation for the operation was thorough and detailed. They gathered all the resources they could, including the best specialists from the Ghosts and their old allies. The plan was simple infiltrate the complex, 
destroy the remaining shadow leaders and destroy their infrastructure once and for all. The day of the operation arrived. James, Carla, and their team began their trek to the mountain complex. Using the latest technology and their skills, they overcame many obstacles, including complex security systems and armed patrols. When they reached the entrance to the complex, the final phase of the operation began. Once inside, they encountered brutal security. A fierce firefight ensued, but thanks to their skill and coordination, the team was able to move forward. James and Carla knew that every step brought them closer to their goal. When they reached the central command post, they were confronted by the elite of the Shadow, the last and most dangerous leaders of the organization. In a tense and dramatic fight, James and Carla fought tooth and nail. Each of their blows was accurate and powerful. Each shot was fatal. Finally, they reached the final goal. The leaders of the Shadow were defeated, their plans were destroyed, and their infrastructure was destroyed. But at the last moment, when it seemed that victory was already in hand, one of the self-destruct devices was activated. Time was ticking. James and Carla, realizing that the complex was about to explode, began evacuating. They ran along the corridors, avoiding traps and explosions. At the last moment, they managed to get out of the complex when it collapsed in a gigantic explosion, burying the remains of the shadow. It was a victory but a victory with a price. They lost many friends and allies in this fight. However, James and Carla knew their mission was accomplished. They destroyed the shadow and freed the world from its threat. Returning to Australia, they decided to start a new life. They retired from active combat and began to build a future where they could enjoy the world they had helped create. Their story became a legend and their names became a symbol of struggle and victory. But even in peacetime, they continued to be on alert, ready for any surprises. After all, they knew that the world is never absolutely safe, and there is always a place for heroes who are ready to defend good. James and Carla's story may come to an end, but their legacy will live on forever, inspiring a new generation of advocates for justice and peace.